On this Earth Day, the final part of our five part series, Climate Watch Protecting Life on Earth. And tonight we are wading into the waters right here in southwestern Pennsylvania, where something called the hellbender once thrived. Yeah, these days the species has dwindled to dangerously low numbers. First alert meteorologist and member of the CBS E team, Ray Petlin, explains what happened to the hellbender and how you can help bring it back from the brink. To look at the wide, flat, slimy face of a hellbender. Some people think maybe they're not the most attractive little guys. With its beady eyes and goofy grin. How can you just not fall in love with that little face? You might not think it's sending us a message, but the hellbender's absence from a river or stream in Pennsylvania is a warning sign that things are not right. Despite being the official state amphibian, hellbenders aren't exactly overflowing in our waterways these days. We estimate there's only about 2,000 hellbenders left in the wild. The largest salamander in the Americas at anywhere from 12 to 29 inches, the eastern hellbender should live in rivers and streams throughout Pennsylvania and Appalachia. And if a hellbender can make it to adulthood, dodging fish, otters, and other hellbenders, the rest of the problems are caused by one thing, us. Habitat destruction and degradation. Pharmaceuticals heavy metals, pollutants and toxins, um, agricultural runoff, fracking industry and having that wastewater injected into the ground. And all of a sudden, maybe there's a road going through or even a dam. Hundreds of animals illegally taken from the wild. Humans are the number one predator. The eastern hellbender's cousin, the Ozark hellbender, went through the same thing, but has been rescued from the brink thanks to more than a decade of conservation work. We knew this animal was probably going extinct and we had maybe a 10 to 12 year window to try to reverse that. Missouri's chief herpetologist Jeff Brigler and scientists with the State Conservation Department have built a captive breeding program, collecting Ozark hellbender eggs in the wild to hatch and grow in the safety of the St. Louis Zoo. And that resulted in a lot of little, little baby hellbenders to release to in the future. And a couple of years ago, uh, we, we reached our 10,000th hellbender released into the wild. But that hasn't solved everything. There's still one more risk to hellbenders these days. We had a 500 to 750 year flood event and it devastated the habitat. We lost over half of our population of hellbenders. Climate change means massive floods that were supposed to happen once a century or once a millennia are now becoming more common. You're gonna be having 100, 200 year floods every 20 years. And are they gonna have time to rebound within those systems? Brigler says breeding hellbenders to be released back into the wild needs to be paired with an active protection of their habitats, like planting trees along waterways to block runoff and to filter out toxins from homes and industries. The more you can filter that, the more we can limit the damage to these systems. Documenting hellbender sightings in our creeks and rivers isn't an arduous task. It's so prehistoric. It's something anyone who's out fishing can do. Kiski River has been notoriously known to be extremely dirty um, with all of the runoffs from the industry. And I think it was a year or two ago, they actually, a fisherman found a hellbender. He caught one on his fishing line. And from that, it spurred other people to really look at the water quality and the different safety measures that we've put in place and how that's affecting our water. Our water's getting cleaner. A hellbender just living there can give conservationists an idea of how things are improving in the whole environment. We're actually starting to do survey work in certain areas looking for these populations of hellbenders so we can protect them more to make sure that the environment as a whole stays healthy. But while the Ozark hellbender population is growing at the St. Louis Zoo and captive breeding is underway at nearby zoos in Columbus and Wheeling, the Pittsburgh Zoo's hellbender is still swimming solo. Right now, captive breeding is still kind of new. Um, we're still getting out all the kinks. So uh, right now, we don't have any plans, but hopefully in the future, maybe. At this rate, it will take years of work for Pennsylvania's hellbenders to start to recover like their Ozark relatives. But at least for now, there's hope. We owe it to each one of these animals to give them a voice. And as we said, it's important to document any hellbender sightings in the area to bring them back from the brink. So if you see one, speak up. You can do it online through Penn State Outreach. And we've posted a link under Earth Day or our Earth Day section on our website, kdk.com. I also want to thank uh, uh, Tori Wigurski and Corey Martin, both members of the E-Team here as well, that helped me with this story and do all the heavy lifting for this story and tell this important story of the hellbender. And it's not the only one. If you missed the CBS National 
National Environmental Correspondent David Schechter's 30 minute protecting life on Earth special last Friday night. We're going to restream that coming up at 7 o'clock tonight on CBS News Pittsburgh.